Welcome to Marcos and James, the Lisbon Pirates podcast. Good morning, Tiago. Good morning, Mark. How are you doing today? I'm doing fine. 2019. And, uh, to, uh, yeah, it's, this, <laughs> it's the first podcast of 2019. Yes, it's our first one. Yeah. This, this is going to be a big year. I can feel yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm, I think I'm, I will follow you. I, think I will we're follow gonna, you. And, and we're gonna we're gonna get some more listeners. Uh, I'm yeah, hoping to get, yeah. go from about two or three to about eight <laughs> or nine this year. So big yeah, yeah. expectations. We'll triplicate our <laughs> <laughs> so well, um, you know, it's good to start out a new year. It's kind of exciting. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Uh, you know, typically people will make, uh, uh, what do you call them? Uh, New Year's resolutions? Yeah, so what, New what, Year's resolutions. We would say the same thing. Is that common here? Do people make resolutions? Yeah, yeah. I think... Uh, do, do, do people keep resolutions? <laughs> nah, that, yeah, that's all <laughs> other department. Yeah. Okay, so I was listening to the, the news yesterday, Portuguese yeah. news, and talking about resolutions. Mm -hmm. And people, the newscaster was saying that one of the resolutions that people make is to go to the gym, to work out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, this was, this was the kicker, this is what made me really laugh. The newscaster said, 70 to 80% of the people that have a gym membership don't go to the gym. 70, 80%? To 80%. Yeah, so, I didn't know that. Yeah. The number <laughs> is that's huge. High. Yeah. yeah, so they said people pay for it, but then they don't go. Which makes me think about, uh, and I know, there's a difference. Uh, one thing is a gym, and one thing is a church. But sure, in, sure. but in some ways, sometimes unfortunately, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. it can relate to each other. Yeah. Ho hopefully, it's not eighty yeah. <laughs> percent. <laughs> Do you think that when people turn the new year, though, they go, mm, "I should go to church more." Is uh, anybody saying that? Uh, I don't know if they take that as a New Year's resolution. But I remember that some, some years ago, and this is something that comes from the years that we were planning a new church, mm. and so I would count everyone that would come. Right. And you know, it's a habit that, I, that still remains with me, so I can't help it. I, I still try to make a, a head count of people. Yeah. Right. right now, I can't be sure because there's always a... Um, there's always people coming that I that I can that I I, I can be precise right, in terms right, of the exactly. number. So I make a yeah. how would you say a estimate? Estimate, yeah, yeah estimate, estimate of estimate. of now an estimate of what? Like how many people yeah, came okay. this year? Yeah, or for, came in for, 2018? No, each Sunday. For oh, each instance, Sunday, right? Uh, last Sunday I counted about 116 mm -hmm. the ones I wrote down yep. on paper yeah. and so I would say okay we were about 120 because sure. generally there's overlap sure. and but I, I'm, I'm telling you this because generally months like January uh, and yeah. February okay. February you have a little bit more people uh, coming. A spike yeah. yeah a little bump uh, at least during some 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 years uh, this experience happened here mm. i don't know because we didn't start with with the uh, the first two sundays in our church okay. they were not uh, uh, the biggest ones right. so i don't know if the, if this is a tendency and if this is a tendency mm. that will also happen in 2019 in 19, wow. but in some years i, I could I, I could note that general generally january and fe february were, were um, bigger months hmm. in terms of people coming. And of course you have spikes during the year. You have a spike at yeah. Easter. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Is there, are there any other major no, spikes? Do you know that in the last years, uh, Christmas, Christmas and Easter, that used to be uh, mm -hmm. generally, uh, mm -hmm. or, or do, do you say spike? Like a spike in yeah. attendance or a, a bump. And, yeah. um, it changed a little bit. Really? Yeah. Changed a little bit. In the last two uh, Christmases, I would say that in our church, we had a spike. Right. But the previous years, we didn't, didn't have. have a spike. And in Easter, in no way uh, right. you have a spike. That's one Only thing. if you baptize, because right. then you attract then you, people. Right, and the visitors come, yeah. family, all that yeah. kind of stuff. Yeah. Well, one of the things that's been fun to watch uh, over the years, is, as we've been here at Lapa Church, is the uh, sunrise service has grown yeah. exponentially. So the first time we went to the sunrise service, I don't know, four or five years ago, there was maybe what, maybe 15 of us? Yeah. It was a small amount, yeah, 20 was, maybe. Yeah, yeah. And, and then last year, I don't know how, how many were there? Probably. 60, um, 70? Probably around 70 or yeah. 80. Yeah, it was, yeah. It was a yeah. lot of fun, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 And, and, and the same is happening 
uh, with the Christmas service. Mm -hmm. It's it's not uh, so it's not a, an explosion of people coming, but uh, it, it it's growing a little mm. bit. And I would say probably it also applies at um, Good Friday. Right. Good right. Friday exactly service. Right. Yeah. 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 Okay. So people are looking for. I would say that right now probably we are more open to the idea that special uh, special festivities call right. for special days right. and, and and people try to to live that mm. in community and, yeah. and, and it's yeah. a beautiful thing yeah to do well and, and I think the interesting thing is even over the last couple of years we have seen growth in our church. Yeah. And uh, yeah. I, I know that's not every church in Portugal and not every evangelical church is seeing growth, but we're seeing growth and yeah. it's exciting. Yeah. Uh, and it's exciting to see growth despite what some people yeah. uh, in this culture are saying about evangelicals. Yeah. And so that's, that's what I want to do to yeah. this morning is talk about, um, in particular, um, an article that was written yeah. about yeah. evangelicals because it was, it was very strong. Yeah. Do, do you right? know the article was about uh, the Brazilian Okay, president. yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, and then he kind of segued yeah. out to yeah. kind of take yeah. some cheap shots. Right? Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Because it, it, and it was very unfortunate because it it was not even uh, uh, rigorous. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. uh, so the, the writer is a well known journalist in Portugal, Miguel Sousa Tavares. He was complaining about uh, Bolsonaro mm -hmm. being elected, yeah. and he was talking about. Uh, the importance that evangelicals uh, mm. had for right. this election right and first the first mistake he, he was taking bolsonaro as an evangelical he's right. not he's right. a catholic he's married to an, an evangelical yeah. but he's not yeah. he, 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 of course it's true that the evangelicals um and you know there are lots of evangelicals mm -hmm. sure. in brazil in some ways it's Brazil, it's, in some ways, it's more like the United States yeah, than, yeah. than Europe. Mm -hmm. um, and, of course, evangelicals uh, had a, an influence right. of getting Bolsonaro elected. And, and this is something that probably we are not uh, uh, going to debate. But one of the things that Miguel Sousa Tavares was saying is it was really a cheap shot because he said that the evangelical faith was something, it was, um, how would you say, it was embushed. So it's a uh, fraud right, right, that right. only works and grows in places where large amounts of the people are uh, an, al an alphabet? Al al almost an al like uneducated. Uneducated, right? is, that, is, exactly. that, is that how you would translate that? So it was terrible because, uh, we, uh, of course, each country will have its weaknesses. And we, right. uh, we, I went to Brazil, I know Brazil in a little bit at least. And of course, there are, are, uh, are, there are weaknesses mm -hmm. in Brazil. But just taking the evangelical mm. growth there right. as a sign of they are, they are an uneducated people, it's really, it's sad. It's mm -hmm. just sad. Mm -hmm. It's just mm -hmm. sad because it's, it's go look for a simple explanation that will make you feel better than, right. than all the, right. the other people. In, 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 in a way, to use uh, your journalistic uh, privileges to write in such a way yeah. that uh, maligns or attacks yeah. a group of people, yeah. which, you know, it's really interesting. If if he would have written that about yeah. Jews or no, Muslims or he, anybody he, else, I mean, gosh, he, he would have been, been in trouble. Oh, he, he would have been would fired. Be in trouble. Yeah, exactly. And and I don't want to play the the victim here, but uh, I really believe this that going after evangelicals publicly mm -hmm. is is the only religion that will not right. get you, you exactly. in trouble. Yeah. You can yeah. say the worst things about evangelicals. Some years ago, our own president, uh, Mario Soares, he already died. And he said terrible things about the Protestants and mm -hmm. evangelicals. And he, and he was a part of the uh, um, uh, fr uh, Religious Freedom mm. co Committee. That, he was the that president. Started it. Yeah, yeah, that gave the religious so freedom. Yeah. It's unthinkable because, like you were saying, if you say that about Muslims mm -hmm. or, or even Catholics. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And, and I know there's a lot of Catholic, um, uh, there's a lot of anti-Catholicism mm -hmm. Catholicism in our press. But you wouldn't say the same thing even right. about Catholics. Right, right. You would get in trouble. Right. And evangelicals, you can just shout yeah. at us and yeah. nothing will, will happen. So, so that's my question for you as a, as a Portuguese believer in this country. When, when things like this happen in the press, because it happens frequently, um, typically, and correct me if I'm wrong, but typically I think the first reaction is to want to be a victim, right? To kind yeah. of be victimized by 
what's going on or what people say and be, be very upset about this. But you have a little bit of a different perspective. How, how, do, how do we go about not being victims as evangelicals yeah. In, in continuing on with this kind of press that's, that yeah. is seemingly con continuous, it doesn't stop. Yeah. You know, th th there's, uh, there's a, a phrase that, that, that I heard uh, reading to Tim Keller, and he said that you, you, as Christians, we should try, uh, even when we feel, how do you say, mal maligned, maligned or, maligned. Yeah, yeah. you should try to look for is there any kind of truth mm. in something that for wow. me I listen something uh, just like as uh, is there some kind of truth uh, uh, in something that I listen as offensive mm. right right and and this calls for great humility yeah absolutely yeah, and and we we should try even when things just sound unfair mm. is there any kind of truth that I can learn with and right, and, right, and be right. humbled um, and sometimes yeah we'll probably if we'll, we'll, as evangelicals we have a lot to to we have to understand that lots of times uh, people will get out wrong uh, ideas mm -hmm. about us mm -hmm. and sometimes we we make it easy to have right, like exactly that. right yeah, yeah and for instance um if we kind if we kind of if we are proud about disengaging with other people uh, uh, culturally yes. speaking right right in a way, you cannot feel um, offended mm -hmm, mm -hmm. if people don't understand you and mm -hmm. they don't know how to frame you. Because in a way, you, you were never um, worried about right. making yourself, uh, how do you say, accessible, not accessible, but at least understandable. Or, right, right, yeah, culturally at yeah, least, yeah. yeah. And, and, and that, well, that's one of the things that we saw so very clearly when we moved here to Portugal was that evangelicals seem to be a subset of yeah. the culture and so yeah. Yeah. It, it, to the point where it, it didn't even seem like that subset or that subculture had much relevance to the culture yeah, yeah. And, and that was a hard yeah. thing to understand because it was it was like wow um, when evangelicalism is such a small minority it should be having the greatest voice yeah but yeah. when it's so disassociated with its own host culture, culture yeah. or home yeah. culture yeah uh, it loses its voice and then it doesn't yeah. have anything to say. And that's why uh, as a church we try because we really feel that this is something coming out from the gospel. Right. That we try we try to be um, uh, talking and being a part of our Portuguese right. culture. Not trying to be relevant because yeah. there, there, there are th to be honest, it sounds for me like a pitfall. Oh, well, yeah. the church has to be relevant. And so, because even when you think, oh, the church has to be relevant, it's already a sign that you don't understand your own culture and you're coming from the outside. And in a way, it will be artificial. Right. So I'm a Portuguese, of course. I'm not a typical Portuguese. In some ways, I'm not that Portuguese because I'm an evangelical. Right. I can understand that. But uh, but I'm still a citizen of mm -hmm. this country. Right. I'm still a, so th there's a lot of Portugal in me, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and I should uh, understand that as a, a, um, something trying that should be seen as natural mm -hmm. in a way natural. Right, okay, I'm right. Portuguese. I should understand that. So mm -hmm. I should be open to study. Uh, my own culture with some uh, measure of pleasure mm -hmm, involved mm -hmm. sure. and generally this is something that unfortunately evangelicals like yeah. you were saying they work yeah. like a, a, a subset yeah, like, yeah a subset or a subculture yeah. of the culture and, and, and it's unfortunate yeah, yeah but at the same time you have the other um, uh, the opposite risk uh, and it happened with the mainline churches mm. in Europe yes. and that you try to be uh, with the culture, right. so you try to be, uh, and I know that because in my own life I, I, I've mm -hmm. been a part of this mistake. Right. Right. I remember that 10 years ago, 15 years ago, 15, 15, 15, 20, I was uh, in, in my college mm. days and, and I tried to be an evangelical in a way, I would I would try to be upfront in my in the things that I that I would believe, and I would talk about the the unpopular things mm -hmm, about mm -hmm. being an evangelical, like being a virgin, right. and stuff like that. Right. 
and I, in, in a way I, I would be even proud which is not a good thing <laughs> but I would present myself like I'm not like you but I would try at the same time to, but I am also not not like your regular evangelical right, and, right. and uh, your regular evangelical so during years I, I, I got way too cynical mm -hmm. so I really understand the cynicism of our right. culture because right. I, I I'm still trying to not I'm still trying to uh, not to be a cynical person mm. because I was during a lot of time and so I, I was walking on a hedge, a hedge or, or I was walking uh, a line maybe or yeah, walking that, that I, I, I was I, I was trying to be evangelical but mm. at the same time I was saying I'm not that kind of evangelical and so and God in a way he, 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 I think that he's been humbling me that uh, so like 20 25 years later do you feel more comfortable in your skin now as a as a Portuguese evangelical? I try to be, yes, because, uh, and you know, this is confession of yeah. sins yeah. And, uh, here in our podcast, because, and, and uh, you know that when false modesty is, is a sin. Right, exactly, okay. yeah. So, just to say this, uh, yeah, and you know this, in our own little um, cosmos called mm. Portugal, mm -hmm. not cosmos, our own little, very tiny country. Our little continue. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> our continue, exactly, our little corner of yeah. the world, like Anna says. Uh, you know that uh, if you t think about evangelical pastors, mm. generally people will not know evangelical right, right. pastors. And the truth is that God has given me a, a, an experience of probably being the more public mm. pass, evangelical yeah. pastor in Portugal. Yeah, and sure. I'm just uh, assuming this yeah, yeah, because it's true. Right. And, right. And, and so I know very well what is to, what is to feel in a way the, the pastor that, oh, I've heard about that guy, right. even when people right. are not evangelical. Okay. And, and being on the news and being in, 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 the, in the newspapers, and I have that experience. So I know too well the, the temptation mm. of, oh, you're, you're the special one because mm. uh, people know you or okay. you're in the press and they will Google and they will find things about you. Doesn't yeah. that make you more of a target, though, in that sense? Yeah, sometimes. Uh, you know, but but the the struggle begins in your own heart. Oh, absolutely. Because yeah. you you, uh, in a way, and I'm being very honest, mm. honest here. In a way, uh, Satan will tempt you to oh, remain mm. remain the the the, uh, the popular pastor right. in terms of people know who you are. Right. It happened yesterday. It wasn't the first time that happened. Yesterday, I was in the public library in Oeiras, mm -hmm. and what, I, I I go there at least once a week. And it was uh, the first time that happened. But a, a lady in her fifties came in. She asked me, "You are Pastor Tiakovaco? Can no I ask you a question?" Wow. Yeah. So sometimes wow. happens things like yeah. this. Yeah. I, I'm I'm not a public person in terms. I, I go on the street and. No one will come right, after right. me, but sometimes it happens, mm -hmm. and uh, and so the the struggle begins in your heart mm -hmm. because in a way uh, I'm tempted to oh I have to remain being this guy that has some kind mm -hmm. of public uh, um, public uh, profile yeah yeah but God has showed me during the years that no if you if you want to if you want to walk close to me. It, it, it's not about having. It's not mm -hmm. about getting into. How would you say, nas boas graças das pessoas? It's not about yeah, the good graces of people, yeah. Right, right, yeah. right? It's it's about you. you the, the kind of good graces that you should mm. look for. It's God's grace, mm. God's yeah. good grace, yeah. not the good grace of people. And so, it's a struggle. That's for that's, me. that's yeah. huge. What you just said is huge because, I think as, as evangelicals in the minority, I think there's always this angst, this this desire to to look good. Mm -hmm in front of culture and people. Yeah. And what you're saying is that the gospel leads us to this understanding of really the only person we need to be worried about right now yeah. is God yeah. and his grace and, 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 and really being right with him. Yeah. yeah. And that, that changes everything, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's not a, a, at least for me, and it's not an easy thing for me. I, I would say that probably uh, as long as I live in, at least as long as I live in Portugal, I will, I will have to struggle mm. with that in terms of uh, spiritually because in a way 
uh, if God gives something in your life, it's a gift. Yeah. So you should be a good steward. Yeah, of absolutely. That. Yeah. And so I, I, I'm not ju just saying, oh, I don't care about the fact that that uh, right. that God the gave me the chance of of of, of talk to um, of talking the media. Mm -hmm. So you, you should steward mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. You should right. embrace that. But at the same time, you have to be. You have to be faithful to God. Right. Not for, even yesterday when the lady was asking me the question, and she was saying, "Ah, sometimes I, 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 I she was saying, I, I used to even uh, hear some some of your sermons." Oh, interesting. Yeah. Yeah, you're listening. I was surprised, of course. Wow. And 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 she was hey, and and yeah, and you sound radical. Oh. <laughs> you're you're the you're the Portuguese David Platt, the radical. <laughs> you're the radical pastor. <laughs> and so it's a strange mix about y y you having the the chance to be heard uh, by non-believers, right. being an evangelical right. pastor, right. which is not a common thing in right. Portugal. But at the same time, people will a little bit of, mm. be a little bit of afraid because oh they think you're too radical right, right. and so uh, if if people are going to go after evangelicals because they uh, uh, we have an image of being uneducated or mm. I want to be part of that group mm. I don't yeah. want to be spared yeah. right. I don't want to be spared right. Right. so and and this is why I really think that we should be careful because okay, let's try to be fair with ourselves and and understand that sometimes we can uh, uh, be offended, but there's some kind of truth in mm. what yeah. people are saying about us. Yeah. So we should be humble, but at the same time, this is about the gospel. It's not about us. So if people are going after evangelicals, probably they are going after evangelicals also because. Mm. Like Jesus was saying, I, I was memorizing this text last week. If the world, in Portuguese, it, it's like this. It's like this. Se o mundo vos odiar, yeah. sabei que primeiro do que vós outros me odiou a mim. How would you say that yeah. in English? So if the, if the world hates you, you, you know that first the world hated yeah. me. And, yeah. and, and you can't go around this. Right. Jesus right. said this. Yeah. And do you know what he was preaching about when he was saying that in John 15 mm. he was preaching about love yeah that's and, right and this is I was thinking man Jesus is teaching his disciples about love and he says wow. do you know how you do you know there's a I'm going to add a, a little thing in, in this speech I'm giving you about love do you know what I'm going to add hate people yeah. will hate you yeah. and, and yeah. man it's really yeah. Uh, right. Would you enjoy that if Jesus is talking about love? Oh, so but I'm, I'm yeah, saying it's a little if you yeah. love each other and yeah. if you if you depend on me, people will hate you. Right, right. And, and that's what yeah. the gospel is saying that we cannot negotiate. With right. This. So so th this is fantastic because this this is this is kind of like. Let's start out 2019 with this perspective, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah. Right. Because yeah. this is great because. Yeah. You know, the start of a new year, the, the start of, of, of a year where uh, there's going to be a lot of challenges, a lot of opportunities, a lot of things going on in, in personally in people's lives, but, you know, here in the life of the church as well. But, but it's almost like stay strong. Yes. St stand yeah. Stand firm. Yeah. You know, yeah. if, if you want to talk about love, you're also going to talk about yeah. this fact that Jesus says, you know, the world is going to hate you. So yeah. stand tall. It's okay. Yeah. This is just naturally what it is to yeah. follow Jesus. Yeah. And so we're not going to run away from it. Yeah. And we're not going to be victims from what people write or, you know, what they say about yeah. us. We're just going to be who we're at <laughs> and who we are. And we're going to let the gospel shine yeah. through yeah. in 2019, right? Yeah. 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 So that, I mean, it's fantastic. Yeah. So uh, that's one thing that we're trying to do here as a church to encourage our members uh, and to continue to teach this, teach the gospel, yeah. and let that just influence every part yeah. of our lives, yeah. right? Yeah. So. Yeah, because there's, a, there's, there's, there's freedom when you have when you are able to stop worrying about what people think about you mm. and and yeah again, blessed freedom yeah. Th this is not an easy thing for me yeah. as you know it's not a really i don't think it's easy, easy for thing. anybody yeah yeah um, yeah, but, yeah but but for me it's really <laughs> difficult because uh and we live in a, in a in a day and age where we are so immersed in ourselves in our yeah. own yeah. public um 
figures and yeah yeah or images how people yeah, yeah, yeah. how people yeah. how people enjoy what we share and this is i'm trying to be um, more brave detoxing mm, in some of good, these things good. because they they are a burden and yeah. and jesus jesus was calling us to a, a great thing mm -hmm. it's, it's it's a gospel of love and because it's a gospel of love it will get some hate going around yeah, towards you and that's just the thing the way things are because jesus knew he 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 he, 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 he how would you say il provo is he, mm -hmm. he, he had to, to, to endure that. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Because yeah. he loved, he the had to The cross is a great hated. picture of that, yeah. exactly. Yeah. So yeah. we cannot, uh, oh, oh, dear Lord, we love to do your own thing in our own thing way. It yeah. doesn't work like that. Yeah, yeah. wow. Well, as usual, uh, we want to invite you to be a part yeah. of, of what we do here at Lapin. Yeah. And so you're welcome to join us uh, each Sunday mm -hmm. at 11.30 for our main service yeah. and it would be a privilege for us to yeah. to welcome you to lapa and to continue to grow together yeah. please yes. come yeah do not be afraid <laughs> see you at lapa <laughs> <laughs>